Alright, hi everyone, this is part two of the Odin tutorial. Today we're going to cover arrays, slices, dynamic arrays, and loops. So arrays, you create an array like this. Uh, you can specify if you want, you don't need to specify though. Um, basically you specify in between the colon. You don't need to do that. So we're creating an internet, you can create a, obviously an array of any type. Um, and this is just yeah, specifying an integer with five. Uh, like any other language, you access it using the indexes, square brackets. Uh, that works actually the same with everything in Odin. So when you're creating a variable, you put it on the left. When you're accessing or using the variable, you use it on the right. You don't need to specify the length, so you use a question mark if you don't if you want the compiler to work it out. And then you make it immutable like this, like as every other variable. And again, a byte is just representing a Unicode character. And you can be very flexible with this, actually. It's very flexible how you create arrays. So what this will do is it will basically, um, so it will, you will, it will infer the length. Here the length will be 20. Um, you can actually do this length afterwards. Values length equals len. And that will give you the length. So this length will be 20. The first 10 elements will be 10. The second 10 elements will be 20. Uh, so you can do this. It's basically like a loop within a constructor, basically. So slices, uh, slices are basically a pointer with a length. So they're very similar to arrays, but they're pointing to an array with a length. So if you do something like this, you create a slice like this, this will actually create an array and link to it with a pointer. Because obviously the data has to exist somewhere. So it creates an array and points to it. So it creates a slice of another number like this. So we create the numbers array again, and then we slice of the numbers and then we use the uh, colon. So uh, brackets in colon basically is the whole array. Uh, you can also do something like this. Say, for example, you do zero and dot. It's starting at zero, ending in the whole array. So basically, the dot means until the end. That's what it means. What you can do also is say, for example, you could do two and colon. That will basically start at two and go to the end. So it's pretty flexible that way. And the partial slice of the array like this. Uh, so we're going zero to two. So it'll be basically in this situation, one, two, and then stop. I believe it's, in, it's exclusive. Uh, as slices are pointers, you can use them to edit values. So but yeah, basically they're pointers. So you can, it will edit the original array. That's what it will do. Uh, so a slice of numbers will change the first element from one to two. And then if you make them dot dot, you can't change the values. So that's the difference. Uh, so if you want them mutable, use colon equals. If you want them immutable, colon colon. As slices are pointers, be careful when returning them from functions. I'll do that in a probably later episode. Uh, if you, for example, you point to, uh, say you want to return a slice from a function, you shouldn't point to a stack variable because it will go out of scope. So dynamic arrays are uh, arrays that can get bigger and get smaller and be cleared, like uh, vectors in C++. So we create a, a, a number list like this. There is a way to actually allocate like the actual array at, at the start, but didn't include that in this. Uh, so we use dynamic. So what a dynamic array and what actually do is it will create a heap allocation because we don't actually know the size. You want to do this when we don't know the size at uh, compile time. Uh, so we'll need to use the defer keyword. Well, it's best to use the defer keyword. Uh, basically, we want to delete it because we're creating heap memory. I'll do more on this later. So the defer keyword works exactly the same as it does in, uh, in uh, Zig. Basically, at the end of scope, whatever scope we're in, it will call whatever you put after defer. So we add with append. These are basically built-in functions. So there's no OOP kind of style in uh, in uh, Odin at all. Like you basically have to, if you're using a struct, you have to pass it to the function with a reference to the struct. Uh, so you you pass a reference to the struct in the function, uh, and that happens with basically all of these function calls. So append will add. You can also add multiple things to the dynamic list. You delete elements like this. So pop will remove the last element. Uh, ordered remove will basically add the index you specify. So here it'll be zero. It will remove it and then order it the back how it was. So basically it's, it's one, two, three, four, five. You delete the first one. It will say two, three, four, five, or however, whatever the uh, order was before. If you do unordered, then it basically will remove the first element and then replace the uh, last element at the first slot. So it's a bit not in order. And then clear just, yeah, clears everything. Okay, now loops. So there are only four loops in Odin, which is basically a, the same as Go. In Go, there are no while loops at all. 
you only use for loops and surprisingly you can do everything with a for loop so this is a basic for loop like you um like you would see in other languages the big main difference here is you have to basically well you don't specify what it is but you just say colon equals and it will make it an integer by default and there's no plus plus in in odin you have to use plus equals one just because it's kind of not consistent behavior. If it's plus plus i or i plus plus, I mean, what's the difference? Which one do I use? You can also use plus equals. So just to keep it simple, you just plus equals one, and then you don't have to think about it. Everything is always the same. Uh, while loops are made like this. So you just put four, and it's the same as a while loop. So you don't need to, you know, nothing different. And break and continue work like other languages. You can also do something like this. So you can create i, and then four i less than 10, and then i plus equals. <clears throat> and it's basically the same as a for loop, just kind of shorter, I guess. Well, you just kind of, you're putting the declaration above. Uh, so you could do that as well. You can also uh, iterate a style. So say we create a string, and we go for character in phrase. Uh, this will basically go through each character and print it. And that's it. Uh, you can also put in, like in like uh, Rust or something like this, or Python. So for i in 0, so we'd, here we have less than 10, this will go to 9, or we go equal 10, and this will go until 10. Okay, now for the example this time. So first we're doing print words. Um, so what print words will do is it basically, here, printing words, we create uh, a string, which is this. This is a sentence to try and find words to print. What we're looking for is basically each word, and we're going to print each word individually on a separate line. First, I get the length, just to make sure it goes doesn't go out of the bounds of the string. And i got a few things here. Uh, I'm using pointers, which I haven't gone through, but they're basically the same as uh, C. It's basically a reference, or uh, passing by reference is a, is a pointer. But I'll go through that later. So it was a letter. Basically, I want to know, was it a space or was it a letter? So I use a ball for that. Current index and start index, and we're going to use that to make some slices. So here we have two indexes. We have the start index and the current index. So the current index is plus is one each time in the loop. And the start index will be set to current index minus one when we find a letter. So we find a letter, we set the index to that start, and then do it, go until it's a, a space. And then we set the, basically we, we print a slice from the current index minus that. So it should be the whole word. That's basically all we're doing. And we have this function handle word, which takes in a lot of references because we need to edit these values. Uh, so handle word. So we have pointers, which I haven't gone through yet, but pointers are basically with the actual point instead of in, because in, in C++ they'd be like this. We don't do that because that's obviously a multiply if you do, you know, this is a multiply. But they actually make them pointers, you know, pointing, literally pointing. Uh, so it does make sense. Uh, and again, so it, when we put it on the left, it's basically declaring the value. We put it on the right, it's using the value. Uh, it's always the same in Odin. All right, so yeah, we have these input variables. So if it was a letter, then we basically say uh, if it's not more than the length, because if it's yeah, if it's more than the length of the current index, we get outside the bounds of the array. So we basically just do it until the end, and we we are basically printing a slice. So we're printing a slice of the sentence, and then here we are printing a slice to the current index minus one, and we also have to dereference these things. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I'll show you what that does at the end. Then I have another one for prime numbers. Should probably call this prime numbers, but it doesn't matter. So here we create a dynamic array. What we're going to do is every prime number we're going to add to the dynamic array. And I have deferred delete just to delete it at the end. So there's no memory leaks. Uh, for i in, so we're going 0 to 100 and we're just going to see if it's prime. If it is prime, then we're going to add it to the list. That's all we're going to do. And this prime is just this, the basic algorithm of uh, prime numbers. So if it's 0, 1, no, and then do this for loop. And it's just a basic prime number algorithm. Um, obviously, it's not a performant one. And then we uh, we get the length of it. If it's 0, then we just say no primes. If it's not 0, or well, we return, basically. If it's not 0, then we say how many, and then we print them. So I'll show you what this does. So just go Odin run dot so we print the words so the input here for printing words was well, this is a sentence to try and find the words so this is a sentence to try and find words to print yes it was exactly right and then the primes so this works 
So that's all for this episode. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll cover next. Um, maybe input and output, I'm not sure. But and let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time.